Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Still no charges against a former San Antonio police officer following a shooting at a McDonald's parking lot. What a local group is now saying about that decision. And more school districts are deciding to cancel Halloween this year. Parents are not happy. I feel like it's just crossing the line and it's just where does it end? So next people are going to be offended by pumpkins. Why some school districts are becoming more afraid of hosting Halloween festivities for students. Outside with live cam, some clouds and mild temperatures out there. Mike is actually tracking a few storms. Where are they headed? We will talk to him coming up in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday. It is October 11th. It's also a return day for Stephanie Cerna. It took yeah, a long weekend. Thank you. Good to have you back. I know uh, you were busy with your family all weekend. Yes, good morning. Good to be back. Good to have you back with the fam. Thanks. And congrats, by the way, on your fishing tournament. Thanks. Over the weekend. Yeah, we chatted a little bit about it yesterday. Not bad. Today we are celebrating a mild start and uh, rain on radar. What a sight, uh, <laughs> even if it's uh, way far away from us, right? Yeah, I, I mean, don't everybody get too excited about it. It's going to be very, very limited. By the way, did you hear he finished in the, the top? Uh, I did. Yeah, top half that's of the group awesome. there with the fishing. Mm -hmm. So, Good and that's no fishtail either. So anyway, um, <laughs> not this time. Yeah, we do have a couple of clouds around this morning. I saw a lot of clear skies when I was coming into work, but especially off to the uh, west, you can see a few of them off in this picture, looking off uh, to the east there. This is what uh, Mark was talking about: these uh, few showers and a couple of thunderstorms, uh, even out here in Valverde County. And as you can see, the basic direction of travel is pretty much up to the northeast. Obviously, you're getting some decent rain out there right now. Uh, this is going to be grazing through portions of Edwards County. You may see a couple of those showers around Rock Springs as well, but for the rest of us. No, not this time around. There are a couple more very small rain chances down the road. First of all, 67 degrees. We are well above normal by a good five degrees. 65 Bulverde, 70 Port SA, as well as in Canyon Lake. And these numbers are about the same as what they were yesterday. The dew points, the measure moisture in the atmosphere. So just enough you walk outside and go, yeah, there's a little bit of humidity out there. It's not bone drier by any means. Uh, ragweed is moderate. Mold is on the low side. And throughout the uh, the morning hours, we are going to have some of those showers out to the west. 64, so we'll drop down another couple of notches here. And we are going to have partly cloudy skies. And then later on this afternoon, partly cloudy at times more sunshine, 88 high temperature again above normal like yesterday, 84 being the normal high temperature. It's going to be getting hot. We do have a front moving on through here, but not everything what you would expect with that. Then there's another one down the road, which is going to be more of what you'd expect from a, a regular old front. Details coming, and that does include some rain. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Reaction continues to pour in after a former San Antonio police officer opened fire in a McDonald's parking lot. Act 4 SA is a local group known to push for police reform, and they are calling for charges against former San Antonio police officer James Brennan, who shot 17-year-old Eric Gantu. In a statement, Act 4 SA said in part, while Officer Brennan has been relieved of his position as a SAPD officer, he still remains a free man, while Eric remains hospitalized in intensive care, end quote. The district attorney has said he is waiting until San Antonio police complete their own investigation, but Act 4 SA is concerned that investigation could take too long. Cantu was eating a burger when Brennan is seen telling the teen to get out of the car. The car reverses and Brennan fires several rounds. Charges were dropped against Kantu to allow his family to visit him in the hospital. In your morning headlines, Russia has unleashed its most widespread strikes against Ukraine in months. Its most lethal, most recent, recent lethal barrage has knocked out power and water, shattered buildings and killed more than 12 people. Ukraine's emergency service said nearly 100 people were wounded in the morning rush hour attacks that Russia launched from air, sea and land against at least 14 regions. President Biden denounced the latest attack and White House officials said the president spoke with Ukraine's President Zelensky Monday night, promising to continue providing Ukraine with weapons support. New York City is now in a state of emergency because of an influx of migrants. At least 17,000 migrants seeking asylum have been bused to New York from the southern border since April. The city expects to spend at least $1 billion by the end of the fiscal year dealing with the issue. If migrants continue to arrive at the current rate, the mayor warned the city's shelter population now near capacity could top 100,000 people in the year to come. 
The mayor says more than 40 hotels have been set up as emergency shelters and more than five migrant children have been enrolled in schools. He also wants assistance with expedited work permits and a national strategy to slow the flow of asylum seekers. Some have called the busting of the migrants by Governor Greg Abbott and other state leaders a political stunt. Governor Abbott has responded by saying the small towns along the border are unable to keep up and he is instead sending the migrants to sanctuary cities that are better equipped. Now to Halloween and why more school districts are deciding to cancel the holiday. ABC's Lionel Moyes explains. This morning, parents speaking out as school districts across the country opt to cancel Halloween celebrations. I feel like it's just crossing the line and it's just where does it end? So next people are going to be offended by pumpkins. Lower Marion School District in Pennsylvania ending the Halloween tradition after more than 50 years, in part because of safety concerns. Officials pointing to the recent shooting death of a 14 year old outside a nearby football game as one concern. <laughs> A similar scene in Ohio this past Friday, three people injured in a shooting outside a high school game. There is danger in every possible venue in every way. So what are you going to cancel everything? I don't know. But the district says inclusivity is also a reason for canceling Halloween festivities. In the past, students who did not celebrate Halloween had to sit in the library. That felt a little exclusionary. It didn't really feel like it was generating that sense of belonging that we hope to have in our schools. In the Seattle area, Halloween has also been canceled at Brookside Elementary. That's according to radio station KTTH, which reports the principal said many see Halloween as a fun candy filled holiday, adding this is not the case for all. Halloween celebrations are exclusionary for students who come from certain cultural or religious backgrounds. And outside Lansing, Michigan, Holt Public Schools is saying no to all holiday celebrations, banning Halloween costumes on campus, calling them a distraction. It's one day. They have lots of lots of different celebrative days, you know, dress up days, school spirit days. And what's wrong with the Halloween day? It seems like kids will have to save that new costume for whatever their family decides to do at home. But some parents say even the tradition of trick or treating is extra concerning this year with warnings about rainbow fentanyl made to look like candy that could be deadly. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. 437, 67 degrees. And are you ready to start your holiday shopping? Well, from Target to Walmart and Amazon, we're going to show you the best deals available right now. Our Spurs are 0-3 in the preseason so far. Up next, how they've already had another loss going into tonight's game against the Utah Jazz. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guy looking over there at Highway 90. And now Highway 281 at Loop 410. Things are kind of slow right now, but it is 4.37 a.m. Outside with Lycam right now, not feeling very fallish out there. Quite a few clouds around. That's probably a factor in our morning temperatures. Again, Mike is tracking a few showers. We'll get an update coming up straight ahead. San Antonio Spurs departed for Salt Lake City for their game later today. They left behind Zach Collins. That's because the Spurs forward has entered the NBA's concussion protocol following Sunday's loss to the New Orleans Pelicans. Collins had been working his way back since missing the entire 2021 season due to an ankle injury. He played in only 28 games last season before this latest setback. So the 0-3 Spurs will take on the Utah Jazz tonight. Tip off at 8 o'clock at Vivint Arena. UTSA Roadrunners coming off a hard-fought victory over Western Kentucky. It was the same team the Roadrunners beat to win their first Conference USA title last year. Now are 2-0 in conference play. And one improvement the Roadrunners have made during this season is in their run game. They're both mature. They're both older backs. They know what they're supposed to be doing, um, whether that's run game, pass game, protection-wise. Um, both of those guys are a very tremendous asset for us. Definitely appreciate those guys. And, uh, you know, both of those guys, you know, are a blessing for us, whether, you know, Brady's in or Trey's in. Um, we don't skip a beat. Next up for the Roadrunners is a Friday night game at 7 p.m. at Florida International, where UTSA finds himself 33-and-a-half point favorites. 
The really big game in our big game coverage will feature the number four Alamo Heights Mules hosting the number nine, nine Harlandale Indians. Mules have kicked back from the season opening loss to Seguin after as many as 21 players were suspended for a hazing incident. Since that time, the Mules have reeled off five straight wins, averaging almost 56 points a game to go 5-0 and in district. Likewise, the Harlandale Indians have rebounded well after they lost their season opener to Veterans Memorial. Like the Mules, they have since rolled off five straight wins, all in district. This game is for the lead in District 14 5A Division 2. That district title game that we've been waiting for, you know, practice, all that for this, this upcoming week. And Harlandale hasn't been able to play for a title district since can't even remember. So this is a good opportunity for us guys to show what we got. I know they're a great team. Uh, clearly they're 5-0 and they're physical, big, but uh, it doesn't really matter to us. We're just going to go out and play our game. Kickoff between the Mules and Indians is at Orem Stadium Friday night set for 7 o'clock. And time now, 443 and 67 degrees for now. Holiday shopping season basically begins today. We're going to tell you about some new deals from your favorite stores. And are you ready to have a blast cruising the USA or the world? Up next, how you may be able to get some of the best deals ever on cruises right now. In this morning's GMA First Look, while flight prices soar, we'll tell you how to save big on cruises. Now is really the time. The prices are fantastic. They're lower than we've ever seen across the board on many lines. We're seeing prices of like under $200 or $40 a night. You can take a five-day cruise for less, of, less than the cost of a single airfare. Passenger Ashley Fox already taking advantage of these deals, sailing from Florida to the Bahamas, St. Thomas, and St. Martin. This is the first time I've ever cruised more than once in a single year. It's incredibly uh, cheap um, compared to flying to each of these destinations. I spent probably at least $10,000 less than what it would have cost me to fly into a destination and then go to three different ports. And coming up at 7 a.m., more of those best deals. I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, Miami. Well, holiday shopping is starting earlier than ever this year. 12 on your side, it's Marilyn Moore. It says big retailers are in Black Friday mode right now. Move over, Jack. The holiday shopping jingle is on in October. Is October too early? Yeah, that's too early for me. But a bank rate survey found nearly half of holiday shoppers will start buying gifts before Halloween, spooked by inflation. We actually start this month. Uh, money usually gets a little tight at the end of the year, so the earlier the better. And long before Black Friday, retailers are competing for his dollars. Tuesday, Amazon is launching a two-day prime sale for members. Target is boldly declaring weekly Black Friday deals, and Walmart has rollbacks, especially on toys and tech. I think this is the season, right, of the consumer. Industry analyst Deborah Weinswig says savvy shoppers will find discounts earlier and deeper than ever. This year, because there's so much excess inventory and retailers want to protect their bottom line as much as they can, they're using October as like truly a, an experiment that they have not done before. Her advice to stretch your dollar, shop early, get free shipping online, shop in store, and get this, for technical products, negotiate. Don't be afraid to ask for a lower price. And hang on to your receipts. If you buy something in October, but it costs less in December, many stores will refund the difference. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Good reminders there. And a quick look at the roads with Trans Guy looking over there at Highway 281 at Loop 410. Also at Loop 1604, things are moving this morning. Mike Osterhage is walking one dog for us right now. It's time for Fido's forecast. What a cute little guy. Yeah. Look yeah. at that one. Aww. He probably just had all the energy in the world. Like, let's go. And now it's like, okay, I'm tired. <laughs> let me sit. Let me take a little nap. So it sounds like a good idea, but and you probably still has some pretty good puppy breath going on there. So well, it looks hey, like it. I know. Don't forget, scan that QR code, send in some of those uh, cute little pet pics and all the other pictures that we have, and we will hopefully get to them. All right, got a couple of clouds hanging around here. We'll keep a few of them around throughout the day. And then out to the west, we do have some of these uh, showers and a few thunderstorms. But as this rolls on through over the past couple of hours, it was pretty uh, a lot more intense over there further west in the Big Bend area. And now this is starting to uh, sort of fizzle out just a little bit. 
it's starting to just kind of kind of ease up somewhat and the direction of travel is east and with a bit of a northeastward uh, movement. So yes, it will hit some of uh, Edwards County, maybe some of these in Rock Springs there. Looks like it's avoiding Del Rio and you can see that even that southern end is starting to sort of uh, ease up somewhat, but this will be working its way up to the, like I said, primarily up to the, the northeast. Temperatures are definitely on the mild side, about five degrees above normal across the board around here. 69 right now at Stinson and uh, 67 in Divine. And throughout the rest of the morning, we are going to have some of these clouds hanging around. Obviously, a few showers off to the west. We'll bottom out at 64 degrees, still a couple of degrees above normal, and then make it up in the upper 70s, 82 at noon, top off at 88, just like yesterday, four above where we should be. Mostly sunny skies, couple of extra clouds still hanging around here. Humidity is going to be okay. Not bone dry air, but not where you're just going to walk outside and sweat or anything like that. Here's some of the clouds that we have hanging around here and uh, that disturbance off to the west. That's what is producing some of these uh, showers. And like I said, the whole movement of this is up to the northeast. And so that's what's going to be taking that on out of here. Let's jump ahead and we've got a one front moving through late tomorrow night, early Thursday couple of showers in here. Um, it, it's not what you're hoping for with this front, but going into Sunday and Monday, we'll have a few more extra clouds around Sunday and a few showers are possible. Then we get into Monday and the next front moves on through here and that's going to give us a better chance for some rain. Looks like Monday into Tuesday and yes, that one will knock down some of the temperatures around here. So for today, 82 at noon, partly cloudy skies, top off 88 degrees. Uh, partly cloudy, mostly sunny at times. Now we've got the front moving through tomorrow night. That's going to touch off one or two showers around here early Thursday. Despite the front moving through, temperatures are still going to be every bit as hot. Drier air, though, drier heats up very easily, and we stay hot in through most of the weekend. Then some showers late Sunday and a better chance for some rain Monday into Tuesday. And yes, that one will bring in somewhat cooler air. Just getting us kind of back down to normal readings or a little bit below that. You know what's cool? Mm. You got a twofer on there. I, yeah, I was yes. thinking the same thing when I made that graphic. Yeah, yeah. Two, two, two fronts, fronts for the price of one. <laughs> We'll Thank take you. it. Thank you, yeah, Mike. But only one really kind of knocks temperatures down. Okay, we're still trying to upsell it for you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> 452, 66 degrees. Dan Smith, Steve Lacey, and Bad Bunny all making waves on the music charts this week. Find out which one is taking the top spot. Well, other celebrities are mad at Kanye West, and Bad Habit is still topping the music charts. Really, it's what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Kanye West getting slammed by celebrities over anti-Semitic posts on social media. The one getting the most response is a since-removed tweet in which the rapper talked about being sleepy, but when he wakes up, he's, quote, going DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. You guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who ever opposes your agenda. Jamie Lee Curtis, John Legend, Sarah Silverman, Megan McCain, and more have publicly criticized the rapper, who is currently locked out of Twitter and Instagram. I have an idea. Let's keep spreading kindness together and think of people and things that we can be kind to. The world could use a little more kindness, and it's getting it with season two of Hello Jack, The Kindness Show. The series strives to pick up where Mr. Rogers left off, modeling good behavior to young kids, the kind of behavior creator and host Jack McBrayer says he wasn't seeing enough of in the world. Place I was witnessing grown-ups in day-to-day -day life treating each other with such a lack of what I perceive to be a lack of civility and a lack of compassion and a lack of kindness. And that disappointed me. That confused me. That hurt me a little. Season two of The Kindness Show is airing now on Apple TV+. Plus. I bite my tongue, it's a bad habit. People still digging bad habits. Steve Lacey's track marks its second week atop the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. Sam Smith's Unholy climbing to the second spot. Meanwhile, the Bad Bunny album Un Verano Sin T clocks its 13th week at number one on the Billboard 200 chart, tying it for the most weeks on top in the past 10 years. And happy birthday to Cardi B, the chart-topping rapper turning 30 today. While MC Light, who blazed a trail for artists like Cardi B, turns 52. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens and ABC News, Los Angeles. And the time now, 456 and 66 degrees for now. Russia has unleashed new strikes on Ukraine. We'll tell you about President Biden's latest promise to Ukraine and what's expected today at a special virtual meeting of G7 leaders.
And a local woman is now on trial accused of murdering her four-year-old daughter. Why she says what happened was an accident and why prosecutors say she's lying. Are there any major accidents on the roads this morning? Stephen Cavazos will have an update coming up here at the top of the hour. We'll talk to him coming up. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. How dare you decide now when a job is at stake to come together but you stay home and leave the families have been demanding transparency and accountability. How dare you attack those of us who lost our children in the worst way possible. Strong emotions at the Valley CISD board meeting last night surrounding the retirement of the school superintendent. Why many are supporting his decision, plus an update on the search for a new leader for that district. The fallout from that barrage of Russian missiles aimed at Ukraine yesterday. I'm ABC's Jay O'Brien. That plus President Biden's meeting with world leaders coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting at 66 degrees, pretty mild for the most part. And I guess a shower, not close to us, but we're gonna check in with Mike to see where that's happening. It's at least something new to talk about. Good yes. morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, October 11th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good Monday. Uh, things will be warming up. Uh, you know, later in the week, though. Mike, are these showers or storms within four or 500 miles of San Antonio? <laughs> well, yes, uh, and uh, yeah, some folks out, especially out to the West Valverde County and in portions of Edwards County, Valverde, you're getting some of the rain right now and you're going to get some in parts of Edwards County, but then they're just going to be kind of scooting up to the uh, north of us. And yeah, like Steph was talking about, about getting hot. Well, it was already hot yesterday, 88 degrees, about four above normal. And yes, it will be getting even hotter. We do have some clouds hanging around here this morning. Mid 60s, bottom number, dew point at 60. So just right at the point where you kind of notice the humidity 88 high temperature today and ain't seen nothing yet for over the next couple of days have very, very hot tomorrow as well as on there and kind of going into the weekend more on that in a second getting ahead of myself here. The aquifer yesterday dropped down half a foot and the allergens. We do have just a moderate amount of ragweed that went down from the previous day's reading and mold is on the low side. All right, talking about uh, some of those showers. Take a look out there in uh, western parts of our viewing area over around, like I said, Valverde County. And uh, yeah, those are, they've been sort of easing up a little bit as time has rolled on. As you can see, not as much in the way of any lightning strikes are being detected right here. And the overall aerial coverage is somewhat uh, dropping down a little bit as well as these continue again to work their way pretty much off to the northeast. So they are going to continue to graze through the northwestern portion of Edwards County and then just to uh, kind of continue up to the uh, north of our viewing area. So that's pretty much that's it. Yeah, uh, at least some folks did get some decent rain out there to the west, but not now. We do have a couple of more rain chances down the road. Right now, partly cloudy skies, mild again, that rain off to the uh, northwest and then mostly sunny, partly cloudy, however you want to call it. Some clouds hanging around here. Warm or should I say hot, 88 degrees. Then it gets hotter. Now, tomorrow we'll be up in the low 90s. Pay attention to this front comes through here drier air, but it's still going to be hot in behind that front temperatures really aren't going to move all that much because the drier air also heats up quite easily stays hot throughout most of the weekend more clouds. We do have some showers later on in the weekend and then another front comes on through here. That's going to start to generate those showers. That one will at least knock temperatures back down to normal readings once we get into the first part of next week and still it's looking like a decent shot at some rain first part of next week, which is some good news. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cabasso's morning, sir. Anything cooking yet? Uh, it's pretty quiet out there this early morning. Uh, Mike, let's get a look around town, find out exactly what the commute's going to look like <laughs> for those early bird commuters. 90 West at Zazamona doesn't look too bad. And as we get a peek around town there at the Transguide cameras, 35 at Alamo uh, looks probably a little bit busier for this early in the morning, but 37 at Jones Avenue. Pretty quiet start there and they're at 37 at Hackberry. So no worries and no issues to report as of yet. But let's go ahead and take you to the map and show you what we will be talking about as long as it stays quiet 
Yep, it's going to be those road closures and you see them right there in and around the Alamo City. We'll get you that information in just a minute, but if you do have to head out the door and hit the roads and hey, maybe your destination is the Alamo City. Let's check out those travel times, especially if you're coming in from Seguin. You are still in the green. We have 29 minutes on I-10 westbound. If you're traveling in this early usual drive time on 87, traveling northbound in Laver and coming in from Lavernia, it's about 33 minutes at this point and a 28 minute drive time for our friends down in Floridasville. So we are in the green right now and I'm getting one last peek at our trans guide cameras here. Things are quiet so far, but as I mentioned, active road closures will continue to bring you that information coming up in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Thank you. New this morning, a drunk man accused of throwing some women's purses into the San Antonio River and then stabbing a man. San Antonio police say it happened downtown just after midnight near the intersection of East Market and South Alamo. SAPD says the man had gotten into some sort of fight with the women, ended up throwing a phone and their purses into the river. The man stepped in to help the women, but police say the suspect stabbed the man twice in the back. Officers arrived and detained the suspect. The victim refused medical attention. SAPD says the suspect was checked out at a hospital while on his way to jail. It was a packed emotional Uvalde CISD board meeting last night. All this surrounding Superintendent Dr. Hal Harrell's announcement he intends to retire. As Lee Waldman shows us, tensions between Harrell supporters and Rob victims' families boiled outside of the boardroom. The boardroom behind me can only hold 90 people total and far more showed up on Monday night, far more than we have ever seen show up. It's a fact that families of victims say ripped at their wounds. Just to show that we love him and that we support him. I don't know any other outlet that they had that was that true and honest and just a good man who truly wanted to do the right thing. Tiffany Massey and Nicole Ogburn are both teachers with Uvalde CISD. They taught fourth grade at Robb Elementary and were there on May 24th. They were two in a crowd showing support for Superintendent Dr. Hal Harrell as the school board accepted his retirement. Change protocol. I think we need to change laws. We need to quit pointing fingers and blame and we need to start moving on and just fixing the laws and protocols. Meanwhile, families of the victims and their supporters quietly filed inside the small Benson boardroom as they have done for four and a half months. 21 murdered teachers and students wasn't enough for outrage to outrage our Uvalde strong community. But your retirement is, you are very blessed. Kimberly Rubio tearfully spoke about how Harold is the one who handed her her diploma and put students first, reminding everyone the families never asked that he resign. She spoke about the hurt caused by the community directing hatred towards grieving families over a decision Harold stated he made himself. <laughs> Kimberly and Felix walked out. They were met outside, but what appeared to be a pushback from supporters of Harold. Some putting the responsibility on Harold to reunite Uvalde. Dr. Harold, uh, take us a long way in bringing this community back together. The board voted unanimously to have Walsh Gallegos begin the search for a replacement superintendent. In a statement posted on Dr. Harrell's wife's Facebook page, in his words, he wrote, he'll remain in the position until the end of the year when a new superintendent is named. The families reiterated they never wanted him to retire in the first place. And Uvalde, Lee Waldman for GMSA. Lee, thank you. 508, a San Antonio woman accused of murdering her four-year-old daughter is now on trial. Jessica Briones faces up to life in prison. Body cam footage the day she took her daughter to a police substation was shown in court. The four-year-old girl was taken to a hospital where she later died. Now, Briones claimed the girl fell off a chair. Prosecutors say that's not consistent with what a medical examiner found. The defense argues there was a different reason for the injuries found on the child's body. An alarming number of San Antonio police officers have died by suicide this year alone. So far this year, the department has lost four active duty San Antonio police officers and one retired officer. The department also says a total of six active officers over the past five years have died by suicide, and that number does not count the retired officers. A former police officer who started a nonprofit to support first responders says more needs to be done. 
if a individual does not feel driven in his perception and emotions that he has a uh, a, a supportive command staff to come forward with any type of mental health questions, issues he might be experiencing, um, then he's going to keep it to himself. And when that happens, because they're afraid of the outcome or some type of adverse effect occurring after reaching out for some support, uh, you have officers who just continue to go deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole of the trauma they're experiencing on an everyday basis. And a reminder that Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is available all the time. You just need to dial 988. Today is the last day to register to vote for the November midterm elections. This election all hunt 435 seats in the U.S. House and a third of U.S. Senate seats are up for grabs. Early voting starts October 24th and the last day to apply for a ballot by mail is October 28th. Election day is November 8th. Also, the ballot, of course, is the race for governor of Texas and district attorney and a big race for county judge here in Bear County. Right now on KSAT.com, we're taking your questions for the candidates in both those races. As Election Day gets closer, we'll get those questions answered and answers posted online. This morning, there's new fallout from the latest barrage of Russian missiles launched at several Ukrainian cities. As ABC's Jay O'Brien reports, President Biden is now doubling down when it comes to supporting Ukraine with weapons. This morning, U.S. officials condemning the barrage of Russian missiles which struck several cities across Ukraine Monday in one of Moscow's largest attacks in months. <laughs> missiles hitting at the heart of the Ukrainian capital, Kyiv, one striking near a children's playground. This woman reacting in horror. Others fleeing to bomb shelters, shell-shocked. So scary, you know, you can drive uh, to work and boom, and you're gone. The attacks also knocking out parts of Ukraine's power grid, leaving major cities in the dark. The country's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, defiant, telling his people Ukraine cannot be intimidated. President Biden calling the attacks senseless and reaching out to Zelensky yesterday to reiterate U.S. support for Ukraine's defense against Russia, including a pledge to supply Ukraine with advanced air defense systems. Vladimir Putin saying he personally authorized the strikes in retaliation for the destruction of a key bridge connecting Russia to the Crimean Peninsula, which the Kremlin has labeled a terrorist attack. President Biden will meet virtually later today with members of the G7. A senior administration official tells ABC News the group of world leaders are expected to discuss ways to aid Ukraine and continue punishing Russia. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. 512, 66 degrees. Amazon kicks off a second Prime Day style event today. We're going to tell you about the best deals you'll be able to find over the next 48 hours. Neighbors reacting to a shooting on the far west side where a woman was killed when police say the suspect shot at the wrong house. It felt like we had just been in the middle of a, a battle. What new photos and video are revealing about the investigation? And a quick look outside with live cam starting mild. Things will warm up today and actually warm up a little bit more at the end of the week. We'll be right back. 515 friends have released a picture of a woman killed in a shooting at a local Airbnb. 25 year old Novita Brazil was renting out part of her home as an Airbnb last week on San Antonio's far west side when she was killed. Police arrested 17-year-old Johnny Bermia and four other suspects. Investigators say the shooter mistook Brazil's home for another home they were planning to shoot. Doorbell video here shows two teens who are believed to be the intended targets. People living in that neighborhood say they are now concerned about their safety. It felt like we had just been in the middle of a... A battle. Not in my next door neighbors, but neighbors to the left of us, they got, their vehicle got hit, their house got hit, and that's only two houses away from mine. Bear County deputies say the teens in the sedan are also 14 and 15 years old. They were arrested the night of the shooting. Time right now, 516, 66 degrees. And coming up next, how YouTube is making it easier to find people and the channels you most like to watch. A fictional dating app from Ted Lasso is coming to Bumble for real. We'll tell you when and how it works. I've been telling everyone.
The secret to great teeth is having healthy gums. Keep yours healthy with Crest Advanced Gum Restore. It's clinically proven to detoxify below the gum line. And it restores by helping heal gums in as little as seven days. Because you can't have a healthy smile without healthy gums. Advanced Gum Restore from Crest, the number one toothpaste brand in America. Age is just a number, and mine's unlisted. Try Boost High Protein with 20 grams of protein for muscle health versus 16 grams in Ensure High Protein. Boost High Protein also has key nutrients for immune support. Boost High Protein. Is Dad posting a farewell to his favorite college freshman? Nope. He's switching his choice cashback category to gas. The road to college can be emotional, but also rewarding. With the Bank of America customized cash rewards card, you just can't stop getting rewarded. Time check now 520. Let's get a look at the morning commute because things have been pretty quiet there along 410 apparent vital. Maybe a few more folks out there as we're getting closer to 6 a.m. I would say don't rush though. If you're having a cup of coffee at home, uh, the commute right now is not looking too bad. You can see there at 281 at Bassey. Yeah, we have a few more folks out there even there at 90 at Nogalitos, but what we don't have are major issues that are going to hinder that commute. So we take you right to the map. But as I mentioned, what we will talk about are going to be those active road closures and you see a few of them right there scattered in and around the Alamo City, but want to take you right over here to 410 on the northeast side of San Antonio. We know that drilling work has been ongoing. We're going to see a part of that continue on Thursday, October 13th, so we're a few days away from that, but this is going to be for those late night owls or early bird commuters. Nine in the evening to five in the morning is when you will experience or see a right shoulder closure on the westbound frontage road of Loop 410. That will be from Randolph Boulevard to the I-35 southbound frontage road. And we all know that there is a lot of work that takes place, especially on the northeast side of San Antonio. So just watch out for those crews as they work to improve the roadways. But right now, the roadways have been calm. Uh, well, of course, we'll keep a close eye on things and give you those updates right here on GMSA. Guys. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. I guess we're looking forward to the heat a little bit. <laughs> uh, we're looking forward to yeah. it. But before we get to that, since you brought it up earlier, this is no fish story. Yay! Somebody posted the picture. <laughs> and, okay, give us the play-by-play -play here. What's going on, Mark? Uh, the fish, so, how big? Uh, that's a 17-inch largemouth bass mm -hmm. caught early Saturday morning, and it was caught on a topwater lure. That's all they seem to be biting this past weekend. But if you've never fished with a topwater lure, I recommend it because it's, it's an exciting way to catch. So it kind of replicates them going for bugs that are sitting there on the surface or something? Or It what? basically mimics a, a fish that is uh, kind of floundering on the oh, surface, okay. yeah, like in, in distress. Okay. And, the, and that's, that's like a buffet. That's like Luby's open the front <laughs> door. <laughs> for, anyway. For that's bath. a good comparison. Yeah. <laughs> Finishing the top half once again. Congratulations. Yes, Thank you, congratulations. buddy. Congratulations. All right, 66 here in town. We're still uh, four above normal. We'll drop down maybe a couple of notches here and there, but everybody right now is in the 60s. Uh, we'll drop down a couple of more degrees up there around comfort and we've got dew point temperatures upper 50s and then low 60s so just enough humidity to where you kind of sort of notice it uh, it has fluctuated a few degrees here or there up a couple of notches down a couple of notches here or there but pretty much the same as what it was yesterday of course it was much much higher yesterday compared to what we had uh, then over the weekend there's those showers off to the uh, northwest and as you can see yeah as expected grazing the northwest corner of Edwards County but this is all continuing to work its way off to the northeast. A few of these showers, even though the tail end is kind of diminishing there, a few of these showers will also continue to work their way on through on uh, Highway 377. But yeah, at least you got a little bit of rain, but this is not going to be any sort of widespread big, big rain event. 64 this morning, and then we warm up. We'll have kind of a mixture of sunshine and clouds this morning, already up to 82 at noon, and then later on today, Partly mostly sunny skies, so at times more sunshine, at times a few more clouds. It's going to be a hot one, 88, normal average high temperatures, 84 degrees. Now, we've got one front moving through. That's going to be tomorrow night into Thursday. It will squeeze out a couple of showers here and there, but I want to take your attention to, and, and again, like last half hour, to Sunday. So we're going to have a few more clouds here on Sunday and a couple of showers later on in the evening. 
Then we go into Sunday night. A couple of more showers. This is going to be pushed ahead of the next front, which is working its way on through here. Monday, a decent chance for some rain. Now, again, this is still a week away. Things can change, but it's been pretty consistent the past couple of days as far as this moving on in here and then going through the day on Monday as the it's kind of the the best part of the front, if you will, moves on through here. A better chance for some rain, and that would extend on into Tuesday. And this one is actually going to drop some drop temperatures down because the front comes through tomorrow night, Thursday. It's going to bring in drier air, but will still be very warm. Excuse me, will still be hot in behind it. 82 at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature today is going to make it up to 88. So, yep, yeah, it's going to be on the warm side. And then tomorrow we hit 92 degrees. Front comes through late, late tomorrow night, early Thursday morning. Couple of showers associated with that. I don't think a big deal as far as rain. And then look at that, 91 though. Still on Thursday. Now, Friday morning, we will dip down to 61, just about the normal low temperature, but still back up to 90 Friday. Saturday is going to be a hot weekend, 88 on Sunday, a few more clouds. And then that next front comes through here. And uh, some actually long range models are trending much cooler going into the middle part of next week. Still, you know, ways away, but it's an encouraging little yeah. trend. See what happens when you come back to work? Mike gifts you with a couple of cold fronts. <laughs> All right, thank you. You're very welcome. Honored. <laughs> <laughs> right now, 525, 66 degrees. Go ahead and look at your winning lot of numbers. We have pick three, five, nine, one, fireball three, daily four, five, five, eight, nine, fireball six. Cash five numbers, seven, 20, 26, 27, 34. Texas two step, one, eight, 14, 25, with a bonus ball of 23. And Powerball, 3, 6, 11, 17, 22. Powerball, 11, power play, 2. Good luck. In today's Tech Fights, Amazon has kicked off its second Prime Day event of the year. The Prime Early Access Sale runs through tomorrow, offering deals on hundreds of thousands of items. You can get a Fire Stick for as low as 20 bucks, a Keurig Mini Coffee Maker for 50, and save $70 on AirPods Max. The at symbol has now come to YouTube. The site has introduced handles to help creators identify with their channels. The at username format mimics the symbols used on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The handles will appear on channel pages as well as YouTube shorts. Finally, the fictional dating app from Ted Lasso is coming to Bumble for real. Bumble Live will let users chat without seeing any pictures of each other. If they match with the person, they will be able to see their full profile. If you're single, the fun begins Thursday. Those are your Tech Bites. That's, that's pretty funny. We're still waiting on the release date for Ted Lasso Season 3, but we know they're done film, filming. Yes, we have a big following there. Yeah, we do. <laughs> 529, 66 degrees. And still ahead, what a new report commissioned by Elon Musk is saying about the number of bots that are on Twitter and how it compares to other social media platforms. Kick back and relax. Probably something you should not do if you're driving. We'll tell you about a new report that shows the alarming amount of people that are putting too much faith in self-driving cars. A man tried to help others, ended up needing help himself. Someone stabbed him. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why police say for at least one person, calling 911 wasn't an option. And taking a look outside with live cam, enjoy the 66 degrees. We'll be hitting the 80s later today. And good morning, it's Tuesday, the 11th of October. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good Monday and, you know, prepare for the heat that's going to come later this week. That's right. Plan on that. Mike has a couple of fronts. And Mike, we're only 23 days away from no shave November now. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Hey, that's Greg. right. Yeah, right around the corner. You know, after Labor Day, it's just, you know, the gas pedal goes down and just speed through the end of the year with all the events and everything that comes up around here. We do have a couple of clouds hanging around right now. And uh, just to kind of qualify what Steph said, yes, we're in the mid. 60s right now getting into the 80s, but upper 80s later on today, not just low 80s where we're supposed to be 66 right now. Dew points at 60, so we've got a little bit of humidity, about the same as what it was yesterday. Easterly wind, three miles per hour. Still those couple of showers out there to the west and to the northwest, and those are moving through the northwestern corner of Rock Springs. Now, a couple more are moving through the mountains of northern Mexico. They're right around uh, just to the south Big Bend area, and the way things are going a lot of times with this, it's going to be 
wanting to fizzle on out. Some of those may actually try and work their way in toward Del Rio, but as far as this batch, everything is sliding up to the northeast. So beginning rain is just going to be folks way out there to the uh, in the northwestern part of our viewing area. Everybody's in the 60s as of right now here in town. We are right now four degrees above the normal low. We'll drop down maybe another degree or two. Ragweed is moderate, did come down from the previous day's reading. Mold is on the low side and uh, throughout the rest of today, we'll make it up to 82 at noon. Gonna have a lot of sunshine, a couple of clouds mixed on in here. So if you want to call it partly cloudy, mostly sunny at times, still very, very warm. It's going to get even hotter tomorrow. We'll be in in the low 90s preceding the first in of two fronts moving through in the next seven days. Uh, yes, this front will bring in drier air, not cooler air. We're actually going to be about as warm in behind it as we are in front of it. A couple of showers got a better rain chance, better front coming in here late in the forecast. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, anything to talk about yet? Well, what was the name of your team last year, Mike? Team. Uh, Gray oh, hair? Was it gray hair? I hate to say I that. Something like that? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, I, I think, think so. Yeah. Yeah, I had all the gray hairs working for me. I believe, <laughs> hey, well, you know what? We're going to have more no shave in the weeks ahead. We are uh, already getting prepared for that. But if you have to prepare to head out the door in the next few minutes, let's get a quick look at that commute because it's been pretty quiet over here. US 90 at military there, 35 at 37. Yeah, getting more folks out there. That's always expected minute by minute as, of course, we get the morning roll in there. But thankfully, we're not talking about any issues over here in the traffic lab. We're just seeing some quiet roadways, and that's the same situation as we take you to the map. Also seen a lot of green on the screen, which is some relief for anyone that has to head out in the next few minutes. Enjoy it while you can, because when the commute does get going, we will see some congestion as well as, uh, of course, uh, possible incidents that could pop up on the roadway. Just remember to drive safe. Same goes if you're traveling into the Alamo City from any of these communities, because it's still pretty pleasant on I-37 northbound, traveling in from Pleasanton with 28 minutes at this hour. Highway 90 looks to be about half an hour. If you're traveling in the eastbound lanes, traveling in from Castorville, that arrival from Idle looks to be about 16 minutes on I-35 northbound. So no worries there. It's been a quiet morning so far. Again, enjoy the roads while you can. 410 at Perrin Vital. You're basically going to have some uh, quiet commutes so far, but we're going to watch the roads closely. And as always, make sure you do the same. Mark Steph. Thank you, Stephen. You this morning, San Antonio police say a man who came to the rescue of a group of women ended up in danger himself. They say someone stabbed him. It happened overnight on a downtown street. Katrina Weber is live downtown with that story. Katrina, was that man seriously hurt? Well, police told us that he was stabbed twice in his back, but apparently he was well enough to refuse a ride to the hospital. Officers quickly found the man or caught up with the man who they believe was responsible. They took him into custody near East Market and South Alamo. The police believe this started with some sort of argument around 1230 this morning at a McDonald's restaurant in the Riverwalk area. It initially involved that suspect and three women. They say during the disturbance, that suspect threw a purse and cell phone that belonged to one of the women into the river. Police say another man intervened and started fighting with the suspect, and that is when the suspect stabbed him. Now, although the man who was stabbed refused to ride to the hospital, police say that the suspect did leave in an ambulance to get checked out before he was taken to jail. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. It's been nearly two weeks since Hurricane Ian slammed into Florida's southwestern coastline, and the cleanup for many is just beginning. As CNN's Jen Sullivan reports, some residents in the Fort Myers area were able to return to their homes for the first time since the monster storm hit. Mangled metal, broken furniture, and piles of debris lined this street in Fort Myers, Florida, as people clean up the damage from Hurricane Ian. You go down the road here, and there's people that have nothing. Nearly two weeks after the monster storm slammed into Florida's southwestern coast, Tom Delforge finally returned to his home. Much of the furniture on the first floor was ruined and mud marks lined the walls showing how high the water rose. Uh, I, I just couldn't imagine this. While the damage is devastating, even worse could be the bill to fix it. FEMA funding will bring some relief, but insurance companies may not cover all the costs. I thought hurricane insurance covered surge because that's part of a hurricane. It does not. Meanwhile, in Sarasota County, some schools finally opened their doors Monday after crews worked around the clock to fix the damage. We fully realize that this is a time of transition, rebuilding and recovery. 
It could take several more days for other schools to reopen. Many buildings suffering severe water damage and loss of power. Our team is providing increased emotional supports at our schools. At least 125 lives lost in the southeast, with most of them in Florida. And that number could rise as dive crews search cars and homes still submerged in water. I'm Jen Sullivan reporting. The cost of bacon and other pork products could soon be going up. The Supreme Court will hear arguments today over a California animal cruelty law that could raise prices nationwide. The case involves a California law that says pork sold in the state needs to come from pigs whose mothers were raised with at least 24 square feet of space, including the ability uh, to have space to lie down and turn around. The case's outcome is important to the nation's $26 billion a year pork industry. The outcome could also help define the limits of states' ability to pass laws that has an impact outside their borders, including laws aimed at combating climate change or improving drug prices. Elon Musk has commissioned a report on Twitter bots as part of his legal battle with the social media platform. The analysis found Twitter had more fake accounts than other comparable social platforms coming in at around 11% of the total user base. The report used a machine learning algorithm to analyze hundreds of parameters to determine which accounts are authentic. Twitter has said for years that bots make up less than 5% of its daily active users. The prevalence of bots have been a sticking point in Musk's $44 billion acquisition of Twitter. Gas prices are on the rise again. A gallon of regular could hit $4 a gallon in most of the country this week. But there is some good news. Prices might not stay there long. The recent rise, up 12 cents over the last week, comes after news of OPEC's decision to cut production. But keep in mind, several West Coast refiners have been offline because of accidents or maintenance. Now that they're up and running, even in the face of the OPEC announcement, the price of gas in Western states is already falling. So experts say if you see higher prices this week, you can expect things to drop back down a bit by next week. And the time now, 541 and 67 degrees for now. Still ahead, why some economists think the U.S. could start losing 175,000 jobs every month throughout much of 2023. And watch out for those driverless cars. We're going to tell you about the alarming number of drivers who let their self-driving vehicles operate without watching what's happening on the road. That's encouraging. Outside with live cam right now on your early Tuesday morning, October the 11th. See a shot there of the Frost building on the left, Alamo Dome on the right. You're watching GMSA. In your morning consumer headlines, the U.S. could be on the verge of losing tens of thousands of jobs. Bank of America warns the Federal Reserve's aggressive inflation reducing policies could also slow the job market. The company says the economy could start losing 175,000 jobs a month throughout much of 2023. Bank of America believes a recession will begin in the first half of next year with the unemployment rate climbing to 5.5 percent. That's one percent higher than what the Fed expects. But it's also well below the peak of nearly 15 percent in April of 2020. Some drivers are putting too much faith in their self-driving cars. That's according to the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. The study found 53% of General Motors users, 42% of Tesla users, and 12% of Nissan users were comfortable letting the system drive without watching what was happening on the road. Some were even comfortable letting the vehicle drive during inclement weather and in parking lots. The systems examined all have some differences, and though automakers have cautioned drivers about their limits, researchers say some people still have a poor understanding of the technology's limits. The findings based on phone and online surveys of roughly 600 regular users of the General Motors Super Cruise, Tesla Autopilot, and Nissan ProPilot assist systems. And time now, 545 and 67 degrees for now. Right now, checking Transguide, 410 and Broadway, looking good. So is uh, just a little bit further down the highway at Paramidal. There's 90 at Zarzamora. Stephen Cavazos has uh, got an eye on things for us. We'll get an update from him coming up right here live on GMSA. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story. Building the Ofrenda. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome our lost loved ones back to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each has a specific purpose. 
origins of Pan de Muerto can be traced back to Mesoamerica when the Aztecs would place food offerings at tombs. This is believed to nourish the souls on their journey to the living. There are many variations of Pan de Muerto. Some loaves are made to look like the human body, others are made to look like bones or skulls. They are often flavored with orange blossom and topped with sugar or sesame seeds. You can place Pan de Muerto on your ofrenda along with the rest of your loved one's favorite foods. Five forty nine. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, uh, big problems out here along I thirty uh, five. Appears to be some sort of structure fire that we have seen here on the Trans Guide cameras. Uh, just spoke to them on the phone, so we're working to get a direction of where this is actually at. But you can see there, it's off in the distance. And my advice to drivers: just you got to stay focused on the roads when you have problems like that. Of course, we are going to work to find out the details. But you can see those flames and the smoke billowing in the background from that Trans Guide camera. So this is obviously going to have to be something we keep a close eye on. But right now, it doesn't appear to be in impacting traffic. This is along I-35 at Ingle Road, as you can see there on the Trans Guide camera, but uh, it is as you approach New Braunfels. So I'll work to get some details, but again, keep your focus on the roadways and hopefully everyone's doing okay out there. Let's get you to the map because the map stays the same. Thankfully, no slowdowns are reported, no crashes, nothing major that's going to slow down the commute. But what we will continue to talk about are a lot of these active road closures that you see in and around town. Let's talk about what's taking place here off Loop 410 over on the northeast side of San Antonio. If you're just waking up with us. Uh, we mentioned this a little bit earlier, but what we will see there is drilling work that actually will begin on Thursday, October 13th, 9 in the evening at 5 in the morning is when you'll see that right shoulder closure on the westbound frontage road of Loop 410. That will be from Randolph Boulevard to I-35 southbound frontage road. And again, this is on the northeast side of Loop 410 as you approach I-35. So a pretty busy area, but if you want to stay up to date with all the traffic and closures, head over to our website, ksat.com slash traffic. But we got to take it back to this trans guide camera. Camera just uh, not looking good out there, but we'll find out what's going on and bring you those details. Yeah, it's a pretty sizable yeah, fire. Yeah. You definitely can't miss it on nope. that, that trans guy camera, Stephen. Right. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. We are going to work on that for you folks. Yeah, we hope to have that info soon. But looking over at the picture behind Mike, I love that wrestling skeletons. <laughs> and as it says, the only problem, they only do bone crushing moves. <laughs> uh, of course. There, I got another one coming up in about an hour, and I think there may be some competition going oh. on. Yes. Oh, between families uh -oh. doing uh, skeleton displays? Hat. Yes, indeed. Okay. Pass indeed. And uh, get a big kick out. There's the dog. There's Looks the like dog. it's biting the ref's rear end. <laughs> See, and, and, and we had heard that there were other families kind yeah. of getting in on this, or were already doing it, and we just didn't know about it. Which is fantastic. Yeah. The competition out there. Got some clouds right now, and then we're still watching some of these showers out here to the northwest. These are moving through northwestern Edwards County, continuing up to the northeast, and then there's a couple more that are trying to take shape uh, right out here in the mountains of Mexico, the Big Bend area, and these are also working their way to the northeast. So you may get a couple more here in uh, Valverde County if these do indeed hold together. Uh, they may start to get kind of uh, torn apart a little bit going over the mountains right there in Mexico, but we'll just kind of keep an eye on those as well. There's a big system out there, obviously, to the west, which is moving northeast and taking all that with it. So other than those few showers out to the uh, northwest, we have some clouds hanging around here and we'll bottom out at 64 in town. 62 being normal low, so still a little bit above that. And mixture of sunshine and clouds, best way to describe it, I think, throughout the day. At times, more sunshine. At times, a couple more clouds. 88 for a high temperature. That is also above normal by a good 4 degrees. So here's the, uh, the wind flow right now. We've got these dew points that are in the low 60s throughout much of the area. So humidity that you notice. The overall flow is coming in here out of the southeast. It will drop down. Dew points will drop a little bit this afternoon. Not a heck of a lot. And then they do kind of come up tomorrow as well and throughout the day. Then notice how there's some drier air that's going to be coming on in here Thursday. That's the first front that moves on through. Now, with that drier air, it will knock temperatures down or allow temperatures to dip down to just about normal readings, but that's not going to last very long. Humidity comes back in here for the weekend. These are low temperatures, high temperatures. So here's the front that moves on through. We're still going to be at 91 in behind that front because that dry air heats up very, very easily, and we stay in the low 90s all the way through the weekend. Then the next front comes on through here, and this one is going to pull down 
uh, some cooler air as well as a better rain chance, which coming in here, there will be a couple of showers with the first front that moves through tomorrow night into Thursday. But then coming in here Sunday, we have a few more showers around. And then also on Monday, a couple of showers Monday into uh, Tuesday, we've got a, uh, an OK chance for some rain. Quick check of the tropics, kind of keeping an eye on that batch of clouds right there down there in the Bay of Campeche. So as far as our forecast today, 82 at noon, we are going to be getting up to 88 for a high temperature. Front comes through tomorrow night. It's going to be really hot tomorrow and pretty hot in behind it, although less humidity. A couple of showers, better chance of rain by the first part of next week and a hot weekend. We'll be back after this. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest from Ukraine after Russia's deadly missile assault on civilians, the biggest since the start of the war. President Biden and our allies are meeting this morning, and top spokesperson for the National Security Council, John Kirby, will join us live. Also, the battle for your holiday dollar is happening now. Amazon launching a big event where you can find the deals right now and then how rival retailers are responding. We're going to have that and so much more coming up right here on Good Morning America. Ahead in our next hour of GMSA, Halloween almost here, but school districts across the country are debating whether to cancel celebrations. The reasons for calling it off may surprise you. We'll explain. And why did a man toss three women's belongings into the San Antonio River overnight? We'll tell you why. Checking Trans Guide right now. We again are tracking a large fire right now between Garden Ridge and New Braunfels that is showing up on Trans Guide cameras. Right now you're looking at a couple of different camera shots and there is Trans Guide is now zoomed in on a significant fire. Again, we don't have any details. It's now showing up, I believe, on two different cameras. This is now the one at 35 in Psalms Road. were hurt. And have you made your Halloween plans yet? Well, if you're looking to do something a little different, we've got just the place for you. We'll explain. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting at 67 degrees, looking for things to warm up today and also later in the week. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, October 11th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good Monday. I know the air will get a little drier, so that'll be helpful with the heat to come. Uh, Mike is tracking not one, but two cool fronts in the extended forecast. And he joined us now with more on that. And I know we're not going to oversell the the, uh, the potency of these fronts. Yeah. Well, especially the first one. Yeah. The first one is going to pull in drier air by the end of the week um, to get rid of some of this humidity, but temperatures aren't going anywhere. As a matter of fact, it's still going to stay hot ahead of it as well as behind it. We're looking at a hot week and then uh, a front which is more living up to the term front, I guess you could say, or the, the word front. First of all, here's what's going on on radar right now. I've got this disturbance way out there in uh, West Texas, uh, Mexico, and New Mexico, pardon me, and this is got a couple of showers up there in northwestern Edwards County and there's another little batch down here in the mountains of Mexico which is also working its way to the northeast so you may get another punch another shot at a couple of more showers out there these have been sort of dying down in the past couple of hours so whether that decides to survive the next couple of hours it's kind of a wait to be seen plus it's going across the mountains of Mexico and that sometimes kind of tears things up somewhat 67 here in town we've actually gone up a degree in the past uh, hour 65 ball verde 60 comfort everybody is about four or five degrees above normal ragweed moderate mold is on the low side temperatures will drop down a couple of more notches we've got some of these clouds like i said 64 when it's all said and done just a few degrees above normal and those couple of showers out there to the west we'll make it up into the low 80s today at noon Call it a mixture of sunshine and clouds, partly cloudy, mostly sunny at times, and it is going to be very, well, call it hot, 88 degrees, four above normal, even hotter tomorrow, and to finish out the work week and going into the weekend. Then we have, again, one front tomorrow night, but then we have the second front coming in here late Sunday, early Monday. That one's uh, one you're going to want to pay attention to. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, got some problems out there northeast. Right? Yep, that's right, Mike. Especially if you're approaching New Braunfels, you will see these flames out there. 
Got to keep your focus out on the roadways right now. This is a different shot that our friends at TransGuide were able to get us. Uh, you can just take a look right behind me. Take that in because it is uh, obviously pretty. Some, it's something to see this early in the morning. But uh, what we do know with that, there are several commercial buildings along I-35. However, I will make it clear that we are not sure exactly whether uh, any of those buildings caught fire or exactly what the extent of the information is. But of course, uh, we are working to get those details for you. We actually have a crew heading out to the scene, so we're hoping to bring you the those details as the show does go on this morning. Uh, I am communicating with our friends at Transguide working to find out which direction this is in. But for drivers, again, just keep your focus out on the roadways right now. This uh, we don't want anyone to be distracted, but I, I'm not seeing any flashing lights out there. Hopefully we'll get first responders out there. And, and again, hopefully everyone is OK. But let's take you to the map, because while it's staying quiet up here on the northeast side, despite that fire, we are seeing a, it looks like a crash popped up somewhere here on the southeast side. I'll get our friends at Transguide back on the phone, find out exactly if we can get a shot from the cameras out there, but it doesn't appear from the look on the map. We're seeing any slowdowns just yet, but uh, just keep your eyes on the road this morning. Thankfully, no delays if you're going to be traveling in this early, especially from these communities. That journey from Bernie on I-10 this early is looking at 24 minutes, uh, about half an hour on 281 southbound, traveling in from Bolverde and a 25 minute drive time if you are heading in from New Braunfels. So again, things look fine here, but not looking too good out here at 35 at Psalms Road. We were will we will work part of me to get you that information, but look at those flames. It looks like they're already getting pretty high out there. Again, keep your focus out on the roadways. We'll work to get that information. Mark stuff. Yeah, it seems to have gotten bigger in the last 10 minutes or so. Stephen, thank you very much. We will continue to track that for you. New this morning, an argument downtown San Antonio ends in a stabbing. It all happened at a popular tourist spot. Police started, started just after the midnight near the section of East Market and South Alamo. And that's where police say a drug man began fighting with three women. The man ended up throwing their purses and phones right into the San Antonio River when another man stepped in to try to help. The suspect then stabbed that guy twice in the back, but we're told he's doing OK. The suspect was checked out at a hospital on his way to jail. A packed, emotional Uvalde CISD board meeting on Monday night. All of this surrounding Superintendent Dr. Hal Harrell's announcement to retire. As Lee Waldman shows us, tensions between Harrell supporters and Rob victims' families boiled outside of the boardroom. The boardroom behind me can only hold 90 people total, and far more showed up on Monday night. Far more than we have ever seen show up. It's a fact that families of victims say ripped at their wounds. just to show that we love him and that we support him. I don't know any other outlet that they had that was that true and honest and just a good man who truly wanted to do the right thing. Tiffany Massey and Nicole Ogburn are both teachers with Uvalde CISD. They taught fourth grade at Robb Elementary and were there on May 24th. They were two in a crowd showing support for Superintendent Dr. Hal Harrell as the school board accepted his retirement. Change protocol. I think we need to change laws. We need to quit pointing fingers and blame and we need to start moving on and just fixing the laws and protocols. Meanwhile, families of the victims and their supporters quietly filed inside the small Benson boardroom as they have done for four and a half months. 21 murdered teachers and students wasn't enough for outrage. To outrage are you got a strong community, but your retirement is. You are very good. Kimberly Rubio tearfully spoke about how Harold is the one who handed her her diploma and put students first, reminding everyone the families never asked that he resign. She spoke about the hurt caused by the community directing hatred towards grieving families over a decision Harold stated he made himself. How dare you decide now when a job is at stake to come together? Kimberly and Felix walked out. They were met outside, but what appeared to be a pushback from supporters of Harold. Some putting the responsibility on Harold to reunite Uvalde. Dr. Harold can uh, take us a long way in bringing this community back together. 
The board voted unanimously to have Walsh Gallegos begin the search for a replacement superintendent. In a statement posted on Dr. Harrell's wife's Facebook page, in his words, he wrote, he'll remain in the position until the end of the year when a new superintendent is named. The families reiterated they never wanted him to retire in the first place. And Uvalde, Lee Waldman for GMSA. Lee, thank you. In other news, reaction continues to pour in after a now former police officer opened fire in a San Antonio McDonald's parking lot. Act for SA is a group known to push for police reform. They are calling for charges against former SAPD officer James Brennan, who shot 17 year old Eric Cantu early last week. In a statement, Act for SA said in part, while Officer Brennan has been relieved of his position as an SAPD officer, he still remains a free man while Eric remains hospitalized in intensive care, end quote. The district attorney has said he is waiting until San Antonio police complete their own investigation. Act for SA is concerned the investigation could take too long. Kantu was eating a hamburger when Brennan is seen telling the teen to get out of the car. The car is put in reverse and Brennan fires several rounds. Charges were dropped against Kantu to allow his family to visit him in the hospital. Well, friends have released a picture of a woman killed in a shooting at a local Airbnb. 25 year old Novita Brazil was renting out part of her home on San Antonio's far west side when she was killed last week. Police arrested 17 year old Johnny Bermia and four other suspects. Investigators say the shooter mistook Brazil's home for another home they were planning to shoot. Doorbell video here shows two teens who are believed to be the intended targets. They are hiding behind a neighbor's car moments before they started shooting at a car that was doing a drive by. According to the affidavit, the teens in the video are just 14 and 15 years old. They are Bermea. They and Bermea are facing charges of deadly conduct with a firearm for shooting at the sedan as it drove away. People living in the neighborhood say they're concerned about their safety. It felt like we had just been in the middle of a, a battle. Not in my next door neighbors, but the neighbors to the left of us, they got, their vehicle got hit, their house got hit. And that's only two houses away from mine. Bear County deputies say the teens in the sedan are also 14 and 15 years old. They were arrested the night of the shooting. The car they were in was reported stolen. They are facing charges of murder and assault. Over in Ukraine, new fallout from Russian missile strikes launched at several Ukrainian cities Monday. Moscow says the attack is revenge for the destruction of that key bridge connecting Russia to Crimea. Many of the missiles hit civilian targets. At least a dozen people were killed with over 60 hurt. The attacks also knocked out huge parts of Ukraine's power grid, leaving major cities in the dark. These strikes mean Russian President Vladimir Putin and the Kremlin could escalate the conflict even further. He needs to find an off ramp. He's losing on the battlefield. He's probably running out of cruise missiles to lob into Ukraine. So he needs a way out. President Biden will meet virtually with members of the G7 nations later today to discuss more ways to aid Ukraine and continue to punish Russia. The time now 611 and 67 degrees for now. Are you looking to make Halloween plans? After the break, we'll tell you about an unconventional spooky experience that will also leave you with a clean car. And this one is for all the Whataburger warriors out there. Just ahead, we're going to tell you about the new additions to the James Avery's collection. Yeah, one of those is pretty spicy. And outside <laughs> with live cam this morning, nice morning overall. We do have some clouds in place, so we're holding in the mid to upper 60s here in the Alamo City. Mike's full forecast is coming up, and there are a couple of cool fronts on it. And time now, 614, trending right now over on our website. James Avery is adding some new pieces to its Whataburger collection with new fancy ketchup charms. Yeah, take a look. The burger chain says Whataburger Fancy and Whataburger Spicy Ketchup Charms are now on sale. The sterling silver pieces are replicas of the ketchup tubs. You can get one for $84 at the Whata store and James Avery. These are the latest in the line, includes charms of fries, a Whataburger cup, and the uh, state of Texas with a big Whataburger W on it. Tacos and Margarita is taking over Toyota Field later this year. It's all part of the first ever Taco and Margarita Festival on December 3rd. The one day event will take over the stadium with tasty food and drinks and live professional wrestling. VIP packages are also available. Well, before we get to December, we got to get through Halloween first. 
And if you're looking for ways to get spooked, you can get a scary clean car this Holloway season. That's right. Super Suds is on Bandera Road and transforms into a haunted tunnel on Fridays and Saturdays through this month. The haunted tunnel car wash experience is $30 a vehicle that includes the ultimate wash package. So it's only $20 for members. You could check out some spooky footage from the tunnel on KSET. Dot com. Again, the Super Suds on Bandera Road. Yeah, that looks pretty scary. I don't know. Maybe we'll give it a try. Time now, 616. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, it doesn't look any better out here, unfortunately. 35 at Psalms Road, if you are just waking up with us, wow, we have something to show you right there. Uh, heavy flames out there. You can see in smoke billowing in the air just off of 35 at Psalms Road. This is actually between I-35 uh, there at, uh, pardon me, uh, Psalms Road just off of the highway there and, and not too far from Ingle Road. That was the earlier shot we had on Transguide, uh, but now up here, what it looks like uh, first responders may already be out there. It's very difficult to see because those flames are blocking a lot of the view out there, and of course it's very dark, but we are working to get some details. Katrina Weber is heading out to the scene. This is just outside the city of New Braunfels, so hopefully everyone is doing okay out there. We know that there are a few businesses, so let's hope everyone is doing okay, but it does appear again from if you look very closely, First responders may be already on the scene, so we may be working to get the we may have those details uh, later on today, but just take it easy out there. Stay, keep your focus out on the roadways. Thankfully, this is not impacting the driver, any drivers along I-35 this early in the morning. Let's go ahead and now get you to the map because we do have a crash that just popped up here off of US 90 eastbound there at West Military Drive. Uh, it doesn't appear that it's on the main highway there, so that's good because a lot of people travel on Highway 90 East if they're traveling in from Castroville to the Alamo City, so that could really cause some slowdowns, but doesn't appear that anything is major is being reported out there. Uh, let's go ahead and take a jump down over here to the southeast side. We did mention this crash as well off of I-35 southbound there at Loop 1604. No cameras are in the area, unfortunately, but uh, didn't see any of a buildup out there, so that's some good news. But if you are traveling south on I-37, just remember to watch for those first responders. Let's go ahead and now give you a quick look of the map, that bird's eye view at 617. Thankfully, as we get a big view of the map, just a lot of relief. A lot more green than what we are seeing, but the big topic will probably be here along 35 at Psalms Road. We are working to get some details. Mark, uh, are you hearing something? Yeah, one of our viewers who lives in that area uh, writes to us, and this is unconfirmed right now. Psalms Road at the railroad tracks, Egemeyer Mulch has a fire. All traffic diverted to Kruger Canyon. If you need to go that direction, take Loop 337 to land it and go the back way. Lots of truck traffic. So it looks like that yeah. may be, and we did hear yeah. earlier about a potential that that could be a mulch right. fire. And things are very yeah. dry right now, of yes. course. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, just keep your focus out on the roadways right now and look for those alternative routes. We'll definitely be doing the same here. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Thanks. I was trying to text somebody out there at the same time, so <laughs> yeah. but the, yes. they think it's the, the mulch. Area yeah, there. unconfirmed right now, but okay. and we're hoping to get more from Katrina yes. Weber coming up here in the next uh, 30 to 40 minutes. Thank you to that viewer. Okay. Yes. okay. Yes, well, uh, forecast is not going to help that out too awfully much. We have, uh, as far as a front moving on through here, that's going to be tomorrow night into Thursday. It will pull in much drier air, not necessarily cooler air, and a couple of sprinkles, but the problem is and then in behind that, it's, it's going to be uh, somewhat on the windy side on Thursday. The, so this morning, we've got some clouds out there right now, 64 degrees, and a couple of those showers off to the northwest. We're going to show you that on radar in just a moment. 88 uh, for a high temperature later on today, so yes, it is definitely going to be on the hot side. Gorgeous view. This is the, you know, the moon is just a couple of days past, officially full, but boy, if that doesn't scream... October and Halloween. I don't know what does. Gorgeous picture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that one. So there's some of the clouds that are showing up as of right now. And we've been watching uh, some of these showers out here. And this is this one little batch been moving through Valverde County, grazing uh, Edwards County and working its way off to the northeast. Then in behind it, there's another batch. So it looks like folks around Del Rio, not necessarily a bad thing. You're going to be getting a couple of more of these showers, although they appear to be maybe sort of dying down, but some of these will continue to go into uh, Del Rio, uh, Valverde County, and maybe even into uh, Edwards County before they sort of fizzle on out. So at least a couple of folks are getting some rain. We will uh, drop down to 64 degrees this morning and then sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds get up to uh, 82 at noon, top off 88. That's four above normal mixture of sunshine and clouds today and the humidity, which it's there. It's not bad. 
will drop down somewhat later on this afternoon, as is usually the case in the afternoon, and then come back up. So it's going to be even more humid tomorrow morning. This is preceding the front. Here's some of that drier air, which will come through in behind that front, but it doesn't cool things down. It actually is going to be every bit as warm in behind the front. A couple of showers are going to be possible with that one, but Sunday and then Sunday night, a couple of showers are possible with the next front, and this is going to be during the day on Monday. And then also going into Tuesday, a couple of showers associated with that next front. This one does look like it is going to at least knock temperatures down somewhat more as it moves on through here. 82 degrees, partly cloudy skies at noon, and then again, partly cloudy at times, mostly sunny. 88 high temperature today, well above normal, even more so tomorrow up to 92. That front moves through here. That is going to uh, touch off a couple of showers in the wee hours Thursday morning. Much drier air, but still. Still drier heats up easily, not a not cold air in behind this 91 on Thursday. It will get down to normal finally Friday morning temporarily because back to the mid to upper 60s over the weekend. It's going to be a hot, humid weekend. More clouds Sunday, a couple of showers then late Sunday into Monday with that next front. Yeah, but those mornings look cool. At least Friday morning does. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. 621, 67 degrees. In your GMA first look, cruise ships are offering incredible deals right now with bookings for fall cruises lower than expected. Look for that story and more at 7 a.m. right here on KSA 12. Trilogy for COPD. <coughs> Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on. If you've been playing down your COPD, it's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's time to make a stand. Start a new day with Trilogy. And I'm feeling good. No one's daily COPD medicine has the power to treat COPD in as many ways as Trilogy. With three medicines in one inhaler, Trilogy helps people breathe easier and improves lung function. It also helps prevent future flare-ups. Trilogy won't replace a rescue inhaler for sudden breathing problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking it. Do not take Trilogy more than prescribed. Trilogy may increase your risk of thrush, pneumonia, and osteoporosis. Call your doctor if worsened breathing, chest pain, mouth or tongue swelling, problems urinating, vision changes, or eye pain occur. Take a stand and start a new day with Trilogy. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Trilogy and save at Trilogy.com. The big game and our big game coverage will feature number four Alamo Heights hosting number nine Harlandale. The Mules have kicked back from a season opening loss to Seguin after as many as 21 players were suspended for a hazing incident. Since that time, the Mules have five straight wins. The Harlandale Indians have also rebounded well after they lost their opener to Veterans Memorial. Like the Mules, they have since rolled off five straight victories. Kickoff between the Mules and Indians is at Orem Stadium Friday night at 7 p.m. And time now, 625 and 67 degrees for now. More information continues to trickle in about this big fire out in New Braunfels. We'll have the very latest on what we know right now coming up after the break. It's one day. They have lots of... Lots of different celebrative days, you know, dress up days, school spirit days, and what's wrong with the Halloween day? As Halloween approaches, school districts across the country are weighing the decision to cancel celebrations for the occasion, but not all parents seem to agree with the idea. We'll explain. Outside on live cam, calm here in San Antonio. Mike has your full weather and Stevens tracking a big mulch fire near New Braunfels that has lit up the early morning sky. Details to come. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, October 11th. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, we'll check in with Steven in just a minute, but let's go over to Mike to check on our warming weather. Yeah, warming and heating up or hotting, I guess you could say, instead of just warming because it's going to be hot the next couple of days. We've got a couple of clouds hanging around here right now and uh, temperature stands at 67 degrees. We may drop another degree or two here or there in the next few hours. 61 is the dew point, so just enough humidity to notice it out there. I've been watching some of these showers out to far northwest, and as you can see, they're continuing to sort of fizzle on out. Just a couple of leftover little sprinkles there, Valverde as well as Edwards counties, and then this batch of rain, which kind of on the the heel of the heels of that, uh, it's also sort of dying down somewhat right there in the mountains of Mexico. That too is working its way to the northeast. So some of those may indeed hold together, and uh, you folks around Del Rio, and then 
almost toward Rock Springs. Another little bit of rain, not a drop buster, but hey, this is uh, this is wonderful to see 59 burning stage. That's the cool spot right now. 60 comfort then uh, mid and upper 60s throughout much of the area. 62 right now. New Braunfels and the uh, ragweed is moderate did drop down from yesterday's or the previous day's reading. Pardon me. Mold is on the low side, partly cloudy, mild. That rain to the uh, northwest that's going to continue to die down mostly sunny or partly cloudy sort of mixture of sunshine and closet time. Definitely warm slash hot today and then hot tomorrow. Front comes through tomorrow night. Yes, that's going to pull in much drier air, but it's still going to be hot in behind it. We'll still be in the 90s behind that front. Then we we will get the drier air, so that's going to cool us down at least for Friday morning, but we get back to the heat and humidity for the weekend. Some showers late in the weekend and another somewhat more substantial front comes through here in on Monday. We'll uh, talk all about that one coming up in just a couple of moments. Traffic Authority, Stephen, big fire out there, not affecting the main lanes of 35. Right? Th thankfully not, Mike. Uh, and you know, Mark described this best. Uh, that, those flames really lighting up the sky in the back. Let's go in and get a wide look at Trans Guide. We are getting a, actually a wider view of that fire and just wow, take a look at those flames. Uh, smoke has been billowing in the air, but uh, we were able to get some information from the New Braunfels Fire Department. We know that this is actually Actually, a mulch fire that began earlier in the morning and crews have been out there already for several hours working to uh, to keep this under control. Now it, we do know that it took several uh, agencies to make sure that they could stop the spread of the fire as well as spread out some of that material and pardon me the mulch that's already out there. But what we can report, thankfully, there have been no injuries, no structures have been damaged and right now it only appears that natural material is burning and right now this time the fire is considered to be under control. Crews are still out there on the scene, so we know that they're going to be there monitoring the situation while the fire is allowed to burn itself out, but they say that could take several hours. So just keep that in mind. You're going to see that for an unknown amount of time right now, but crews are already out there on the scene. No injuries reported. Again, some good news and no other structures have been damaged. We do have a crew actually heading out to the scene to work to get us some more details on exactly what may have ignited this fire, but thankfully no injuries reported per the New Braunfels Fire Department, but we do know that there is at least one closure out there because of this. Let's get you right to the map because what we do know, Psalms Road right there between FM 482 and Wald Road is closed where that fire has been reported. Again, thankfully, it's not impacting the majority of traffic, but we really aren't seeing so much of a delay at this point, but an area that we are going to have to keep a very close eye on as the morning does pick up and as the commute does get going. Uh, let's keep an eye on a few other incidents that are taking place. Got to take a quick jump down over here to the southeast side. We still have this crash reported along I-36 seven southbound at loop 1604 and if you're just waking up with us no cameras are in the area so we're not able to show you the conditions out there but what we are not seeing is a slowdown in those southbound lanes of 37 so that's good news uh, let's take a drive over here now to the west side right there off of us 90 eastbound there at west military we still see some flashing lights out there from the trans guide camera that i have on the screen but uh, thankfully no uh, major delays are reported it appears that could be on the frontage road now giving you that bird's eye view of the map. Uh, we're getting more people back on the roads because it's back to work for a lot of folks. So just remember to drive safe. Slowdowns will be expected as the commute does get rolling. But just remember to keep your eyes focused right here along 35. Thankfully, this is not impacting the majority of traffic. But remember, we do have a crew heading out to the scene. So we are hoping to get you more information. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a man is recovering. Police are looking for the driver who hit him with a vehicle. Happened around 11 o'clock last night at Jones, Maltzberger, and Pinewood on the city's north side. Police say a man in his 20s walked out into the street when he was hit by a person driving a van. The person that was struck was taken to a hospital with a broken leg. So far, no arrests have been made. And San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers are looking for the person who robbed a smoke shop on the city's north side. So take a look at your screen. Officers believe this is the person responsible. That incident happened this past Friday at the Supernova smoke shop on West Avenue near Loop 410 and Vance Jackson. Police say that suspect walked into the store armed with a gun and a machete. Once inside, he forced store employees to zip tie each other while he stole money from the cash register. If you know anything that can help, Police, you are asked to call that number on your screen, 210-224-STOP.
A San Antonio woman accused of murdering her four-year-old daughter is now on trial. Jessica Briones faces up to life in prison. Body cam footage the day she took her daughter to a police substation was shown in court. The four-year-old girl was taken to a hospital where she later died. Briones claimed the girl fell off a chair. Prosecutors say that's not consistent with what a medical examiner found. The defense argues there was a different reason for injuries found on the child's body. An alarming number of San Antonio police officers have died by suicide this year alone. So far this year, the department has lost four active duty San Antonio police officers and one retired officer. The department says a total of six active officers over the past five years have died by suicide, and that's not counting the retired officers. Preston Kinnikin, a former police officer who found a nonprofit to support first responders, says more needs to be done to make sure officers get the support they need. If an individual does not feel driven in his perception and emotions that he has a, a, a supportive command staff to come forward with any type of mental health questions, issues he might be experiencing, um, then he's going to keep it to himself. And when that happens because they're afraid of the outcome or some type of adverse effect occurring after reaching out for some support, uh, you have officers who just continue to go deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole of the trauma they're experiencing on an everyday basis. And a reminder, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is available all the time. Just dial 988. It has been nearly two weeks since Hurricane Ian slammed in the Florida's southwestern coast, and the cleanup for many is just beginning. At least 125 people were killed in the storm, most of those in Florida, and that number could rise as dive crews search cars and homes still underwater. While the damage is devastating, even worse could be the bill to fix it. FEMA funding will bring some relief, but insurance companies might, may not cover all the costs. You go down the road here, and there's people that have nothing. I thought Hurricane insurance covered surge because that's part of the hurricane. It does not. In Sarasota County, some schools finally opened the doors Monday after crews worked around the clock to fix damage. Others will stay closed for at least another week. More school districts across the country are deciding to cancel Halloween this year. As ABC's Lionel Moise explains, it's because of a number of reasons. <laughs> This morning, parents speaking out as school districts across the country opt to cancel Halloween celebrations. I feel like it's just crossing the line and it's just where does it end? So next people are going to be offended by pumpkins. Lower Marion School District in Pennsylvania ending the Halloween tradition after more than 50 years, in part because of safety concerns. Officials pointing to the recent shooting death of a 14 year old outside a nearby football game as one concern. <laughs> A similar scene in Ohio this past Friday, three people injured in a shooting outside a high school game. There's danger in every possible venue in every way. So what, are you going to cancel everything? I don't know. But the district says inclusivity is also a reason for canceling Halloween festivities. In the past, students who did not celebrate Halloween had to sit in the library. That felt a little exclusionary. It didn't really feel like it was generating that sense of belonging that we hope to have in our schools. In the Seattle area, Halloween has also been canceled at Brookside Elementary. That's according to radio station KTTH, which reports the principal said many see Halloween as a fun candy filled holiday, adding this is not the case for all. Halloween celebrations are exclusionary for students who come from certain cultural or religious backgrounds and outside Lansing, Michigan. Holt Public Schools is saying no to all holiday celebrations, banning Halloween costumes on campus, calling them a distraction. It's one day. They have lots of lots of different celebrative days, you know, dress up days, school spirit days. And what's wrong with the Halloween day? It seems like kids will have to save that new costume for whatever their family decides to do at home. But some parents say even the tradition of trick or treating is extra concerning this year with warnings about rainbow fentanyl made to look like candy that could be deadly. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. And right now we are going back to that big fire we picked up on our trans God camera. It's happening right now near the New Braunfels area. We've been tracking this for a while now. That's where we find our Katrina Weber live. Katrina, what do you know so far? 
Well, good morning. We know that uh, this is at a plant here called Eggemeyer Land Clearing, and it does involve mulch, but what it is is it's sending up a lot of smoke and flames. You can see all the way from I-35. This is off of Psalms Road here in New Braunfels, and you can see it right there over my shoulder here. Uh, a huge fire, it appears to be. Now, they have uh, the sheriff's office, the Kamal County Sheriff's Office, has the road blocked off, so we can't get any closer than this. Uh, this is also impacting traffic. A lot of truckers come through this area, actually go to that plant and beyond, and they can't get down that road right now. So a whole lot of traffic going on, but definitely a lot of fire. We understand that this is just um, natural material that is burning, mulch that is burning, no homes or other buildings affected, and no injuries reported as far as we've been told. This has been burning since about one o'clock this morning. Uh, someone who just came up who was supposed to meet up with his party there told us that this happened about four years ago, uh, but it is burning again now. No word on when this fire might be out, but again, they do seem to have this contained within that plant and no other structures threatened, no injuries, again, as I, as I mentioned before. Reporting live in New Braunfels, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. We're going to continue to track that story, and Stevens is also going to have updates on that as well, because it is, as you heard, affecting traffic. 641, 67 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you some things you can do right now to protect your retirement accounts. And despite a rally to kick off October, stocks are deep in the red for the year. And with the downturn in the markets comes a number of moves you can make to safeguard your 401k and retirement accounts. RJ Marquez explains. If you're looking to invest, first thing is to recognize that the markets are going to be volatile over the next 6 to 12 months. That volatility comes as the Fed continues to raise interest rates to fight inflation. Investment pros say if you're planning to buy stocks in the near term, you'll want to hold on to them for a few years to see a return. And be cautious about selling now. While the markets are sharply lower than a year ago, one thing you don't want to do is lock in your losses. Now is a good time to rethink your contributions to your retirement accounts. Financial planners say often people will scale back their contributions in a down market thinking they'll pick it back up when the markets recover. But the key to 401k success is consistent and ongoing contributions. By continuing to contribute during down markets, you can buy assets at cheaper prices. That may help your account recover faster after a market downturn. And check your current allocation to make sure the stocks and bonds in your portfolio matches your risk tolerance. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, RJ. Let's get a look here at that fire off of 35 at Psalms Road. We know this is a mulch fire and this is off of 35, but check out those flames. You can see them right from the highway there. And of course, uh, been there for several hours. We already know uh, Katrina Weber. We're going to talk to her in just a minute, but uh, we know that this has been burning for several hours and thankfully we're not seeing any traffic along 35 that's being impacted, but there are some closures to be on the lookout for. Let's go ahead and start with that wide view of the map there. And you can see that, of course, we already have the buildups taking place in the usual hotspots. Also, keep been a crash, um, pardon me, an eye on this crash here off of US 90 eastbound uh, right there as you're approaching in from 410. Thankfully, no uh, major delays, but we are seeing the usual slowdowns in that spot. So just watch out for that. But we got to take you into where that mulch fire is impacting traffic because according to the new Braunfels Fire Department, the road is actually going to be closed there from Psalms Road between FM 482 and Wald Road just up here. So it's an area you're going to want to avoid right now, but those flames don't appear to be going out anytime soon. Let's go over to Katrina Weber, who's live there now. Katrina, what's the very latest? Well, good morning. Despite the way things look, and again, you can see this fire all the way from the highway from I-35, uh, fire department says that this is actually under control. Now, this broke out around 1 o'clock this morning. It was burning in two different mulch piles originally, but then I guess it did spread to some of the other mulch that they have there. Uh, what they were, what they have done is brought in some heavy equipment. They were able to spread out some of that material to allow that fire to then burn out sort of on its own. So that's where we are now. It is contained within this property. This is called Eggemeyer Land Clearing, and it's contained within their property. No homes or buildings threatened and no injuries as far as we know. But the, the uh, plan, according to the fire department, is to allow this to just burn out. And they say that they'll be here for the next 24 hours until it does so, until they make sure that everything is out. Reporting live in New Braunfels, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. 
Not really. There's not much of a rib. Mark just asked, I don't know if you heard it, uh, asking if winds are, are much of a factor. You saw the smoke almost going straight up, so there's just a little bit of a breeze out there as of right now. Now, Thursday, it's going to be a different situation where in behind this front. All right, first of all, we do still have some of these showers, but as you can see, they are pretty much fizzling on out. Just a couple leftovers out here, Edwards County back down through uh, Valverde County, and another little bit, but this continues to sort of fizzle on out right there in the mountains of Mexico. It may actually have a enough left over to work its way across the river into Valverde County, but these will also continue to die out and that whole system is working its way up to the northeast. We'll have a few clouds, kind of a mixture of sunshine and clouds. This morning we'll drop down to 64, make it up through the 70s to low 80s at noon, and then Partly cloudy, mostly sunny at times, 88 high temperature, well above normal by a good four degrees. Dew point temperatures, so we've got the uh, dew points that are staying on the higher side, and this is going to be the, the trend through the next couple of days, today as well as tomorrow. Then we're going to see dew points drop off once we get behind that front on Thursday. But temperatures aren't going to be going anywhere. We're still going to be very warm all the way through the weekend, upper 80s, low 90s, and the humidity comes back in here. Now we jump ahead to late Sunday into Monday, and we've got some rain coming on in here. This is associated with the next front, and this will be Monday into Tuesday, and then sort of tapering on off during the uh, late afternoon hours on Tuesday. So now this is not written in stone, still a week away, but it is encouraging as far as the second front that moves on through here, because the first one, yeah, a couple of showers, but not really a whole lot of fanfare. 82 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then a high temperature today is going to make it up to 88. Tomorrow, even hotter, we will make it up to 92. A couple of showers overnight with that front that moves on through. Yes, it will drop humidity down, but we're still going to be very hot in behind the front. Friday is finally going to be the coolest morning. The only normal really temperature uh, throughout the rest of the week, but still back up to 90 on Friday. Then we go into the weekend. More humidity, some more clouds around here. Hot and humid. A couple of showers late Sunday. That next front's going to be working its way through the day on Monday, and that, though, will drop temperatures down. And as of right now, a decent chance of rain to start off next week. Steph, Mark. Wow, we are so fortunate that the winds are not a factor for those fire crews yeah. out there. That could have been a very, very bad situation with all our dry brush in our region. 651 right now, 67 degrees. And all parents want their kids to be successful, so what can they do now to help their children in the long run? We'll tell you what experts are saying. That's tomorrow on GMSA. Outside with Lycam, waiting for that sun to come up on your Tuesday morning. We'll be back. How's that going to work? A lot of flames and smoke in New Braunfels, but this is affecting drivers more than anyone else. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. This fire is burning here in the 300 block of Solms Road. This is at a place called Egemeyer Land Clearing, and we understand this is a mulch fire, a huge mulch fire. You can see this fire all the way from I-35. Now, the traffic that it's affecting is not on the highway, although, again, you can see this from there. It's affecting all of the trucks that come through here, through Solms Road. They are having to be rerouted because that area is shut down in front of this facility. Again, the 300 block of Solms Road is where the fire is burning. This has been going on since about 1 o'clock this morning, and firefighters say that they are going to allow this to burn itself out. They have separated uh, that mulch that is burning so that it does not spread to anything else. We understand there are no other homes or anything affected and no injuries. Firefighters are just going to keep an eye on this for about 24 hours, as they've told us. Reporting live in New Braunfels, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Hey, thank you, Katrina. And my advice to those drivers out there, keep your eyes on the road because there's that shot where you can see the flames from off uh, from 35. Uh, watch out in that area. As Katrina mentioned, we do have closures to mention. Uh, as you see, the slowdowns are expected. But just a heads up, if you have to drive through the area for whatever reason, uh, Psalms Road between FM 482 and Rald Road is closed due to that fire. Again, it's going to be there probably for several hours, but we're going to have to watch it closely, Mike. Thank you, sir, and uh, good looking sunrise on tap. We've got a couple of clouds hanging around here. Still those few leftover showers well off to the west. Those are continuing to die off. Temperature 67, 60 comfort, milder than the past few mornings. And throughout the day, we're going to make it up to 88 and then even hotter the next couple of days. Updates on that mulch fire on air and online at KSET.com. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at 9.